Warning, this program contains disturbing images, harsh language, and endgame spoilers. If any of these offend you, I won't be offended if you back out now. <laughs> Found footage movies are probably among the most hated and loved in Hollywood. But why are found footage movies so popular? Is it because they can invoke a sense of realism? A sense that you are there? Or are they insanely cheap to make? I think it's a little both. Especially if it's done right. If it's done skillfully, you need a good excuse for cameras to be pointed at something interesting at all times. Some movies push this. And some just say, fuck it. And found footage movies always seem to be of a particular kind, either science fiction or horror. I've yet to see a POV comedy, but POV movies have also found their own market. And again, cheap. This is Barry Levinson's The Bay. First we get some stock news footage of various disasters we're to believe have anything to do with this movie. See? Instant credibility. The prophecy has come true! The Dark Lord has risen! We bookend the movie with our main character, Heather Donahue as ex-reporter Donna Thompson. I bet this looks amazing on IMAX. This movie uses found footage that had been confiscated by the government until the footage was leaked and Barry Levinson edited it into a horror movie. At least that's what we're supposed to believe. It's July 4th, 2009 on the Chesapeake Bay. You have your normal small town celebration, your regular people, your mayor who won't close the beaches when the shark attacks. For Christ's sake, tomorrow's the 4th of July, and we will be open for business. Wrong movie. This is Donna three years ago, reporting in pants so tight it qualifies as female circumcision. Honestly, why didn't anyone tell me my pants were too tight? <laughs> A big event like this and they send their intern? Do you get the feeling this was the shit assignment nobody wanted? Everyone wants assignments like this. Two dead oceanographers wash up. The local authorities suspect a shark. I suspect boating accident. There's an ecological subplot about a nearby chicken farm letting their chicken shit spill into the bay. Is it really that bad? Fish fucking there! Mel Gibson didn't defeat the Redcoats so we can have naysayers on the 4th. But obviously there's something in the water that's dangerous. I think this is the best darn water I've ever tasted. Of course it's mostly vodka, but it's still good. People start developing weird skin ailments almost immediately. It's like that Skittle disease, but if all they had was cherry. Are they contagious? They were all in or ingesting water. These guys are safe. Wait, crabs live in water. Remember the pie scene in Stand By Me when everyone starts puking? It's like that, but I still want pie afterwards. The doctors are stumped, so they confer with the Center for Disease Control. I got 30 people in the waiting room of my hospital right now. What do you think it is? That's why I called you, smart guy. I think she just fell asleep in her pasta salad. Cops find the first fatality. Let me guess. Shark. In another subplot, a young couple, Alex and Stephanie, and their baby are taking a boat to where the trouble is. And they have no idea this is happening. Kids these days with their internet challenges, like trying not to laugh, eating cinnamon, and collecting festering boils. Even the cops are busy. More bodies are turning up, and Donna awkwardly interviews more people. Do you buy your pants in the preschool section? I bet the anchors back at the studio are just laughing. And I switched her pants to a size 2! <laughs> Even the oceanographers are finding weird things. Is it me, or does this look like they're creating a really gross YouTube channel? We have now seen one infected fish, and we are going to be using this. Doctor Who openings are getting really weird. <sighs> well, I'm never eating fish again. Doctors are trying to keep up by chopping off body parts. Get your plate ready, who wants a drumstick? Still wondering what's causing all this havoc? Here's the little bugger now. Dude, you scream like a little girl. Toodles! Almost forgot to kill some horny teens. Got him. 
and yet Brody still failed to close the beaches. Back to our couple, the husband falls into the water. <coughs> Someone in my mouth. Do you want parasites? That's how you get parasites. Is the hospital sinking? What's with the Dutch angle? What's happening? CDC? Still helpless. Okay, that's important. Yeah, I know that's important. Wait, are they in the same room? Mwah! You, you should have an attachment there with pictures that we sent you. Do you have them? Nice dick. Whoops, <laughs> wrong attachment. But the oceanographers are still on the case. So before the fish die, they're working for Khan. These are pets, of course. The hospital is overwhelmed and house is nowhere to be found. This is the leg of a man treated today at Atlantic Hospital in Maryland. Nice dick. Damn it, wrong PowerPoint. Well, the bay has been found to have pollutants, um, algae, agricultural runoff, chicken excrement. There was a small leak from a nuclear reactor in 2002. What don't they have? Edible seafood. Hey, save some parasites for the rest of us. Reporting from what used to be the fairgrounds of the July 4th party. There's something about the off-camera screaming that kind of gives it a little extra chill factor. What the factor. fuck is that? Maybe it's just her labia screaming for air. Sorry. Cops respond to yet another call where the occupants are being attacked. To me, this is one of the more chilling segments. You don't see anything, just subtitles of their audio. You can let your imagination run wild and mind painted a pretty horrific picture. That's good horror. So we gotta find out what happened to those two divers. You are just asking for it. The reporter is still hanging around, managing to turn an incredible career-building event into the dullest news footage ever recorded. So let's spice things up. Look, a dripping puddle of blood. Let's put our head right over it. Now that's good footage. He's gonna submit this to a prank channel. What do I what do I need to do, Doctor? What do I need to do? Bill him first. I think this kid's phone battery outlasts most of the victims. What were we saying about the water? She somehow made the blood worse. But he was here first. At least he died happy. Oh wait, that's not a smile. Okay, that kind of freaked me out. A toxic soup of chemicals could produce certain mutations. What's also concerning is the level of chicken excrement in the bay. The amount of steroids and that amount of manure. The accelerating growth by 50, 60 times. Wanna bulk up? Eat more chicken shit. Alex and Stephanie were supposed to be here for the celebration. They're more than fashionably late. Is it really necessary for you to get video of this? Because you yeah. never know when we'll wind up on a found footage movie, honey. I want to get out of here. Where are we going to go? You arrived on a boat. Just saying. There's no cell service, so they duck into a store to try to find a landline. They might be safe. Not. So, let's get a subplot recap. Donna walks off the job, camera confiscated off screen. Oceanographers, eaten. Cops, infected and killed. The, the teen girl on FaceTime, dead. Her last word was a poop emoji. Doctor, alone in the hospital and infected, probably dead. The mayor, just elected to death. Alex and Steph, well, Alex ain't doing too well. But there's time for one last scare. Is there something in my teeth? I think there's something in my teeth. There it is. Off screen, the government finally steps in and brings things under control with minimal environmental impact. We're ready to wrap things up. Bring it home, Donna. This is Donna Thompson, signing off. And that was The Bay. Donna is the one we follow through most of the screen time. She bookends the movie with her webcam resolution interview, but in the footage, she mainly wanders around trying to figure out what's happening so she can do her damn job. 
She also has the least interesting character and story after the disaster hits. More than a few performances are overly restrained. I feel like a normal kid will be hysterical, not half asleep. Alex and Steph are the most sympathetic, but mainly because they're bringing a baby into all this. But it's not really about these characters as much about the event itself. They're fodder for the story and body count. Fuck these things. They are actually based on real creatures, but isopods really don't do most of the stuff that happens in this movie. These are mutated super creatures that you shouldn't encounter in nature. Real life isopods are harmless and not dangerous to humans. Enjoy your swim. Also the infection method seems to vary. Larvae infects hosts and either eat them from the inside and make them sick, or grow super fast and pop out. And the adults just straight up murder you. The found footage gimmick, despite being a bit played out, is slightly more effective presented in a documentary format. It grounds the movie in reality and it feels like this could actually happen. Or actually has happened. The video formats vary, lending to the documentary feel. It goes from news camera, to webcam, to cell phone, to Skype call, to dash cam. That makes sense for a documentary that's been cobbled together by various sources. But the flip side of that, some of the resolution is so low, although realistic, makes the movie feel cheap. It's got elements of an outbreak contagion style story mixed with a monster movie presented as a documentary. There's a loud environmental message throughout the movie, but the creature event is so over the top that it kind of mutes the message. There's also some conspiracy theory here, but again, overshadowed by these tongue-eating bastards. And why are they cute? Switching between different storylines keeps things moving, allows the audience to see more of what's happening, but some of the plot lines are more engaging than others, and some just are just hurt by bad acting. I think my favorite part involves the CDC guys chatting over Skype. They seem concerned, yet disconnected, and I think that's how the audience ultimately feels. The bay is two and a half Bs. There are some pacing issues, especially when the doctors are Skyping, but it's still relevant information and adds some realism. It emphasizes the fact that if this were to happen, they would be completely unprepared and we're all doomed. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, you know the usual YouTube stuff. This is the newbie and I'll see you later kids. Toodles. There's something on your arm.